Gordon Ramsay is a world-renowned pro chef. But Gordon, how is this an American barbecue brisket? Gordon, as a barbecue pit master, I'm gonna make you into the idiot sandwich. You're in my domain, and now you will face the judgment of my barbecue review. But not only am I gonna critique his brisket, but I'm also gonna cook it for myself. Because who knows, Gordon's recipe might end up being better than a Texas style brisket. It's beef brisket, a super cheap cut from the breast of the cow. And I've got a delicious barbecue style recipe for dinner. <laughs> That's the exact same clip of the same brisket falling over and over again. <laughs> it feels like it was edited by a producer of an Indian soap opera or something. <laughs> Now, you love barbecues, right? Yes. So, you're gonna help me barbecue this delicious piece of brisket. Are we barbecuing it outside? We're gonna actually put the barbecue flavor on there, but we're gonna cook it in the oven. Okay. okay. His daughter is right. It's kind of hard to call something barbecue if you're not gonna cook it outside. But at the same time, simply cooking food outside doesn't make it magically American style barbecue, but it still is really important. Some of the key characteristics of traditional American barbecue is it's cooked low and slow, so it develops a nice crust and very tender meat. But another key factor is that it's cooked with smoke, typically through wood, pellets, or charcoal. Sorry, propane grill users. So because you need smoke, you can't cook inside because you'll smoke out your house and suffocate. And alternatively, you could end up burning your house down and also still suffocating. But like Gordon alluded to, there are different ways to substitute smoke if you're cooking in a kitchen oven. For instance, you can use smoked salt for seasoning or even use liquid smoke. So it'll be interesting to see what he does to get that smoke flavor. Mustard powder, some celery seed, a little bit of salt in there. Yeah. Cumin. Cayenne pepper? Yeah, absolutely right. Right, two teaspoons of that in there as well. Fresh pepper on there. All that spice into the brisket. With the ingredient list he used, I've seen all of those spices in various rubs. Yes, even cayenne. And I think it's super cool that he used celery seed. Multiple time barbecue champion Harry Sue is known for putting celery seed in all of his brisket rubs because he says that it enhances the smoke ring, which is that red rim on the inside of a smoked brisket, a trademark for American barbecue. But man, that was a measly amount of pepper and salt, especially for a big piece of meat like that. The lack of pepper in his rub is mostly gonna make the crust or bark of the brisket lack that trademark gritty texture. Which for those of you who have never had Texas style brisket before, that might sound a little off-putting, but the texture of that rough, crispy exterior mixed with the tender meat on the inside is just, so amazing on a brisket. But the more concerning thing was the amount of salt he put in his rub. So basic rule of thumb when you're cooking an American style brisket is you want about a 1% salt to weight ratio. His brisket looks about 2000 grams, give or take. So he should be using about 20 grams of salt, which for your reference, this is 20 grams of salt. So I'm really hoping that he adds salt in a later stage of the cook. What we've got to do now, with all those spices, is sear them in. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil, and you get your brisket. All that spice. Lay that in there nicely. I actually love what Gordon's doing here. So normally when you cook a Texas style brisket, you're cooking it low and slow for a very long period of time so that you can get a nice deep dark color on the bark. And this happens through a chemical reaction called the Réaction Maillard. But you can also get this reaction by searing the meat on a high heat like Gordon's doing here. He's cooking this like a steak where you give it a nice hot sear on both sides and then you let it get tender by cooking it low and slow. I think it's brilliant. Take that out, onions into the tray, please. Now, one nice tablespoon of brown sugar. From there, my bay leaves in, please. Yes, please. Four spoon of tomato puree. Really rub it in amongst the onions. Bottle of beer in, please. So you go in. Uh, good health to you and your brisket. I want you to lift the brisket up and put it on top of the onions. I'm using beef stock, but it will work with chicken stock or even vegetable stock. Simply pop it in the oven for three and a half hours. Okay, so he's doing a sear and then he's doing a braise. And you may have noticed that he actually didn't substitute the wood smoke flavor in his recipe. And to this, I say, I love it. So clearly points against Gordon for continuing to call this an American style barbecue brisket because it's clearly not. Barbecue style beef brisket. You barbecue this slightly barbecue already. It's a real American beauty. No! 
But I see so many oven barbecue recipes that try to replicate real wood smoke flavor through liquid smoke and other means. But the reality is it'll never be as good as cooking with real wood and real smoke. Personally, I love the approach of making an oven brisket recipe that takes advantage of the techniques and ingredients that work best in a home kitchen setting, instead of trying to make a mediocre version of a real smoked brisket. Seriously, I can't wait to try this recipe at the end of the video. This is the culmination of Gordon's investment of time and effort into his art to become the culinary genius who can think of a recipe like this. And now you can invest in art as well, thanks to our sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is the platform for investing in contemporary blue chip art by world-renowned artists like Picasso, Monet, Banksy, and Warhol. And these pieces are skillfully selected by art research experts who purchase financially attractive pieces that they believe will appreciate in value. Here's how it works. Masterworks purchases the art, then files with the SEC as a public offering. Members then buy the shares. And finally, Masterworks sells the art and distributes the returns to the investors. Contemporary art prices have outperformed the S&P 500 total return for the past 26 years. There's currently a waitlist to sign up with Masterworks, but if you use my code in the description, you can skip the waitlist and start investing today. And sign up is simple. Just click the link in the description box. And once you're in, click the request invitation button in the top right corner of the screen to get started now. So again, link in the description. Thank you, Masterworks. See that smell just sort of travels everywhere. It's been in the oven for nearly three and a half hours. Wow, that looks delicious. I was fully expecting this to end up like a pot roast and just shredding apart, but those slices are holding up pretty good. Then add in cider vinegar, and you've got a brilliant tangy barbecue sauce. Wow, that is brisket. No, no, this is barbecue sauce. That is soggy vegetables. <laughs> But British slang sounds like a foreign language to me. So who knows, maybe in the UK this is barbecue sauce. And then this would be cobble wobble tin tin sauce or something, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I think I got the gist of it. So let's go ahead and try it out. But two things before I start. Number one is that I am using a choice brisket flat, which is the lean part of the brisket. I wanted to pick the leanest cut possible for this recipe because British pitmaster Dave from Wilson's Barbecue has said that UK briskets are usually grass fed, so they tend to be a lot leaner than the ones that we have in the States. This is also confirmed by simply looking at Gordon's brisket in his video. In some of those shots, that brisket almost looked like a raw piece of tuna little to no marbling whatsoever. Also, I'll be cooking this brisket on my Camp Chef Woodwind Pro. And that's because it has a very powerful side burner to make sure that I get a good sear on both sides of the meat. Because I have some serious doubts that my electric kitchen stove inside will be able to get hot enough to sear an entire brisket. And after it's seared, I'll be cooking the brisket inside of the smoker's cook chamber. So technically I am cooking this with the heat of smoke, but because it's gonna be completely covered by foil, it's gonna be just like cooking it in the oven. Cheers. I mean, it's okay, it's not mind-blowing or anything, but if I had to compare the flavor, I would say that it tastes a lot more like a pot roast than it does a Texas American style barbecue brisket. But for my own personal taste, I definitely wish it had more salt. Let's see how it tastes in the juice. Yeah, I definitely think it tastes much better with this barbecue sauce. So updated beginner smoked brisket tier list. Will Gordon's barbecue brisket dethrone Sam the cooking guy as top dog? Heck no. <laughs> Gordon is dead last. This is not an American barbecue brisket by any definition of the imagination. This is more like a braised Jewish brisket. So make sure to watch the next video on your screen so you can see exactly why Sam the cooking guy's brisket is the current champion. And I'll see you guys over there.